Roger, I don't know what made me decide to recreate the salmon in the bathtub. I guess it's because Yankee Magazine first published the story, which could have been called How to Cook a Fish That's Way Too Big for the Stove. I was inspired by stories of how the American Indians, who didn't have heat-proof kettles, put cooking water in hollow logs and heated it with hot stones. The bathtub is my own invention. Be sure you put the water in first so the enamel doesn't crack. I think I forgot to mention rock quality. Don't use shale, it explodes in the fire. Okay, I'm gonna give you a big one first. Oh boy. Ready, okay. set, go. <laughs> hot? Oh, this is a hot one too. Ooh, look at that baby boy. Keepers. Okay, well, that's what we're after. What were these Indians called? Penobscot? Foolish. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Hunt. The foolish Indians of coastal Maine. <laughs> Look at that baby steam. Never mind Woo! walking the track. Almost everything splits when it hits the water, but by then it doesn't matter. Once you've got all the rocks arranged, you want to seal in the heat. I'm sure the Indians would have killed for aluminum foil. I do. I just burned my knuckles, I'm happy to say. Okay. Midsummer evenings in the square are suffused with the scent of Philadelphia. Beauclerk, to be exact. White flowers like Rosa Suliana, the wild Chinese rose, show up best in the blue evening light. Still, tonight it will be the scent of hot sausages, steaks, kebabs and wine that will fill the air. Yes. These people don't come at weekends, so we tend to have it midweek. We have over 450 garden squares in London, and I think they're the best bit of town planning ever invented. Apart from looking lovely and bringing a bit of the country into the town, they provide a focus for local people, a meeting place, a replacement for the village green of old. It's thanks to the garden that we know by sight and greet practically every single inhabitant of the surrounding houses. A bitter pill to have a party in such a drought-ravaged garden. At least it had the grace to keep not raining on the big day. I was extremely nervous. Would the fish be okay after only an hour in the tub? It should be done. Okay, Come up on, it let's goes. go. All right, let's get it off. Okay. Moment of truth. Take some of this off here. Let's have a look. Ha ha! Oh, look oh at that I'm happy. Face. I'm excited and pleased. Oh, All right. So good. Ooh. Look at that. Oh, hey kids. Oh, hey, perfect. Oh, all right. It really does look just like you catch a fish. <laughs> well, sure. we caught them. They're cooked. Especially, I have a feeling, That's right good. under this rock. <laughs> well, we turn it over. Huh. No one will ever know except us.
the umpteenth day in a row it was blistering hot. Up to 90 at midday, mercifully cooler by late afternoon. The coriander was fine when I went out for it. Crisp and fragrant as it always is if you pick it right before you need it. Things aren't lush, but they sure are tidy. In weather like this, even weeds are discouraged. The garden didn't look too wilty. Right before the party, a well-meaning helper had given it a refresher sprinkle, which would have been great, except it used up all the water. 50 people arriving in minutes and zero in the well. All I could think about was the water situation. Even when greeting Tim, my boss, I'd been cooking for days. Everything from new potato salad to star-shaped biscuits, scones to you, for the strawberry shortcake. All of which would have been for naught if I dropped the salmon. I almost tripped. The back lawn is steep. But in fact, the whole procession was very nearly ecclesiastical. Well, people, fancy that. <laughs> yeah, right, okay, we're all gonna serve it. <laughs> no. so I caught these in a special place. You caught these? Yes, yes yeah. right. Should I put this is some, yeah, this that's, is dill that's sauce right That's a dill inside. sauce with Indeed. a lot of gin and a little bit of cream. Oh, well, gin is good, gin. right? Boy. Gin is very good that? with salmon. Gin is good with salmon? Plenty, honey. Okay. Plenty. Well, there you go. Well, salmon, uh, peas, and potatoes, I think, right? Salmon, new potatoes, and peas. Happy for it. You did, huh? Well, Good yeah, all by myself with no help from you, Reed. <laughs> well, um, looks like you guys full. Yeah. So we got sparklers. Before I sparkle, I think I need to eat. <laughs> okay. London in midsummer doesn't really get dark until nearly midnight. Now Amy is eight, we let both the girls stay up for the party. I think I want, I want to invite the police around to discuss our little problem. Oh, yeah. I've got witnesses and evidence now. I've been accumulating it. Have you seen those times? Yes, I have. The barbecue's a good chance to catch up with gossip about goings on around the square. They've got little white Suzuki, little Sus white Suzuki. What's it called? I don't know. It's one of those sort of white. Little white, yes. Two blonde girls. We've had the police after, and they say, um, how can you prove it? And I don't want to go and prove it. Are you going to prove it? No, I'm, yes, I, no, well, no, no, you, I, I'm not going to prove it. Not for me, no, or you, Simon. Oh, dear. She keeps asking me if I'd like, I'd like a piece of a monkfish, because I know she's after my stick. People say you feel isolated and alone in a big city. I say, try living in a garden square you'll probably find it more friendly than the country. 
We even have old folk who choose to retire here because there's such a sense of community, mostly thanks to the garden. What's amazing is that by morning the inevitable debris has all disappeared and the plants are left in peace once more. I never thought I'd be happy to see so many people in my garden. But they were all such good friends, and all of them had such a good time.